Poverty and early marriages are some of the reasons 50% of Malian school-going girls are dropping out. These high statistics means crushed dreams for many who are still looking for a second shot at life. For 25-year-old Mariam Kone, her dream involves financial independence and serving her community as an electrician. Well, from the beginning to now, I've learned a lot of things. I can do repairs, I can fix cables and power interruptions. Before, I was cooking at home and doing some sales. When I got this training, people in my community now call me to do repairs and it helps me earn a living. Mariam's return to school has demonstrated Fawe's vision for this project in reducing institutional obstacles to female school dropouts from Technical Vocational Education Training, or TVET, owing to gender bias. Like Mariam, Umukante has been trained on electrical installations. I am 24 years old. I work in the electricity sector, especially photovoltaic system and other electrical jobs too. While at home with her mother, Umu heard about an opportunity on radio to help young women gain new skills in electrical installations and solar systems. I went for an application form and they eventually accepted me. These two women are heroes in their own right. They will not have been successful without the buy-in of their communities and families. Umu's husband is now her biggest cheerleader. If you ask me to qualify her, I will say 100%. At 41 and six children in, his wife has not just been a support system, but a hero in Sadi's eyes. For me, she is a very calm person, respectful, hard worker, serious, and she doesn't speak a lot. At the beginning of the project, a baseline was conducted, and one of the things that was noted at that time in both countries uh, especially in Mali, there was low participation of women in renewable energy. At first, we developed a partnership with the National Directorate of TVET, which hosted the project. Within the framework of this partnership, the Directorate developed a training module for the teachers. The modules were used by the teachers to train the learners. After three months of classes, Umu graduated as a specialist in photovoltaic systems with the ability to do small electrical installations at home. This is a program implemented by Fawe with support from NORAD to empower girls and women through quality education and training by giving them necessary skills and values to be productive members of the society. The um, NOVA TV project in Mali and Zanzibar aimed at uh, empowering women and um, adolescent girls, so young women. It was about economic empowerment, helping them to get more employability skills and even go so far as to create their own businesses. In Mali, 450 girls were chosen in three cities, Bamako, Kayes, and Buguni. Each city had 150 young girls to train. Dresa Samake is a trainer based in Bamako. The case of Bamako has been divided into three groups, and each group was composed of 50 lambs. So these young girls are usually the ones who have not been able to continue with their studies or who have not been to school. So far, uh, 850 girls have benefited from this project. And uh, the other key um, 
objective of this project was also to reduce the obstacles that make girls drop out of school. So the TVETs that we were partnering with, we also had to train them on gender responsive pedagogy, you know, means and methodologies of teaching that will encourage girls to stay in school. And also giving them opportunity to try out things like mechanical engineering, STEM subjects, you know, science subjects, because a lot of times we would find girls being pushed to the uh, art subjects and the world is going science so those are some of the things so it's very interesting to see ladies in Mali doing great things with the renewable energy it's very interesting my highlight is to see uh, ladies in Zanzibar now uh, you know taking up a boat into the deep sea to weed you know to uh, for seaweed farming that's quite a highlight for me, yet before they would have to rely on men to be the ones to go into the deep sea to get them the seaweed. And you know what that comes in? It comes with sometimes with undesired favors that you have to give to men. It increases gender-based violence. But this program has trained these girls to actually go by themselves into the deep seas. Project targeted girls, especially those who had dropped out of school, aged between 18 to 25 years. Most of the girls were unemployed. This is to give them a chance, like dropping out of school is not the end of the story for them. At 21, Skuzane Juma is a seaweed farmer in Zanzibar, an archipelago of beauty, spices and seaweed. She's among the girls determined to redefine their fate. At first, she was ridiculed by her peers for abandoning fashionable ventures to pursue seaweed farming. When I first started this business, I was making seaweed juice and seaweed cake. When I finished baking the cakes, I would pack them well together with the juice and took them home. When I got home, I knew my friends would be waiting for me. They always wondered what benefits I get from learning about seaweed. I was very determined to make them samples of what I had made. When I got home, I served them the juice and the cakes. When I finished, I asked them if they knew what they were eating. They just kept asking for second servings. As I added them the snacks, I asked them again. They said it's just juice and cakes. That's when I broke the news to them. The juice and the cake had been prepared with seaweed. They all pretended they wanted to vomit out of disgust. It was too sweet to ignore. I was happy because they praised me. They asked me that I make more snacks again the following day. So I asked them to just buy ingredients and I would make for them. I was happy because my peers who used to alienate me were now ready to embrace me as one of their own. A short distance from Skuzane's home, we meet Raya Ali, a 20-year-old who has been doing traditional seaweed farming for a while. To be honest, my life was just average because I was just a student. Instead of going to school, I was at home farming seaweed. I had no idea if seaweed had any extra benefits. It is after the training that I discovered the many benefits of seaweed. Today, Skuzane and Raya work proudly, having acquired life-changing skills. My life has now changed for the better. Before, I was not confident to express myself before people, but since we started these trainings, I can now confidently express myself before people. We also get to go for exchange programs where I learn more. First, we got a lot of training regarding seaweed farming because before we cultivated seaweed without any knowledge. Secondly, I've been able to process many products from seaweed that we didn't know was possible before. We are grateful and as we continue to build on the knowledge we have, 
We are processing and making products that we sell. Let me start with the seaweed in uh, Zanzibar. Uh, this is another uh, good practice. I'll talk about mentorship. So in Zanzibar, there are women who've done this for so long, but they have been at that product level when this, the weed has already been brought by the men to the show, and then they buy from the men, and then they go and make something out of it. So we introduced these girls to some of these women who have done it for a long time. And so they were having like an internship for like three months, working with these women who were in women groups. And after that, they, the ladies were now able to start their own. And one of the things we were also providing for them was that machine to produce the, the product. So I think as a startup, mentorship is important. For Mali, like I said, they were introduced to private companies and governments to do internship. Fawe had to do a partnership with some of these organizations. So you'll notice that with that kind of mentorship and internship, they're able to start up their own businesses with ease and not struggling because they're not the first ones and they're not reinventing the wheel. While being trained, the core principle of seaweed farming as well as solar installations is coated with public speaking and business skills that help these girls have an idea of how to navigate life after school. We started educating these girls about farming and processing of seaweed. We taught them about seaweed as a crop, types of seaweed and uses of seaweed. The training took six months. Once they graduated, they were given seed capital to go farm seaweed and later process it into different products. There are tangible results achieved because some of the beneficiaries have already landed a job. There is a girl in Buguni who opened her own business with the support of other partners. Currently, she has employed three people with whom she underwent training with. This is a success story. The learnings gathered during these trainings demonstrate a growing appetite that shall be nurtured to make these girls agents of change and role models in their communities. We need to also look at this from a multi-stakeholders approach and ensure that uh, all other TVET work within the country is consolidated and uh, ensure that there is value that is being added to the youth. Because one thing that, that was noted from this work, actually it is the youth who benefit more and more so the girls. The takeaway message both for Fawe and for Norad is that we need to continue targeting vulnerable and marginalized women. We need to offer more training opportunities. We need to look at trades that are traditionally male dominated and train them into those trades because those are the trades that are more um, prospects of um, bringing revenue and uh, giving them higher revenue than the traditionally female trades in which they um, usually um, trade. With the knowledge I've gained, I'll not just sit on my laurels. I'll no longer depend on the elderly women farmers. I'll become independent and later self-employed. Well, it brings a lot of change in my life because when Fawe recruited us, we didn't know much about the job, but we thank God we have learned something. One day during an internship, someone asked me if the job is for women. I told him that there is no women's or men's work. It's just a matter of love. <laughs>